I'm Miguel Alfonso, I come from the University of Rome, and uh, we are working on, we are researching in surgical areas and the use of virtual reality to, to learn people to do some kind of things. And we have mixed these kind of things with uh, trends such as gamification in order to motivate them. Okay? And that's what uh, I would like to comment on today. Um, well, um, the idea is to present uh, more or less uh, why is the, what is the necessity. And uh, after that, uh, maybe a bit of the background and the failure we have to look. Uh, if we talk about uh, surgical procedures, uh, it requires a, a different kind of, of skills than not any other trends. So maybe they are more near to disciplines such as flight uh, simulators and flight uh, uh, learning than uh, other kind of, uh, of uh, learning things. You, you need technical knowledge and you also need practice, practice, and practice. It's the only way to learn, okay? And I imagine that if you go to a hospital, you won't appear a person that is, uh, has, uh, is an expert doing what uh, he's supposing going to do. So. Um, so apprenticeship is something very necessary and not always is, uh, is we have to practice, uh, we have to practice uh, by using physical models and you have uh, different kind of, of restrictions such as economics, logistics or ethical uh, restrictions. Restrictions. Now, what is being used is virtual reality to do these kind of things uh, because it allows to train uh, different surgical scenarios. Uh, uh, you have uh, a um, kind of uh, secure and proof environment. Uh, we, we should be uh, conscious that uh, uh, to carry out this kind of uh, surgery activities. Uh, you are teaching a person, so, so this is very critical to have uh, the knowledge and to learn uh, only very specific things and in a controlled environment. Active interfaces can help us with this because I don't know if you have tried one of these. But an active is a kind of a device with which you can uh, simulate uh, the touch sense. So you can uh, you have a force feedback and you can touch something and receive the, the feedback. And you can simulate textures, you can simulate uh, uh, um, weight, you can simulate uh, the, 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 the shape of uh, an organ. So this could be quite interesting in this, in this area. Um, what we have done is uh, SULE, which is a surgical active uh, learning environment, trying to uh, create, uh, facilitate a way to define uh, surgical scenarios uh, based on uh, haptic interfaces uh, that uh, really helps uh, people to learn this and motivate them by using or by applying uh, games. Okay. Um, talking about the background, okay, um, surgery is not uh, the typical uh, discipline. Uh, we need to consider sight, hearing, and Mainly touch. The main aims of this discipline uh, is to acquire a, a proper coordination of visual and manual skills, and this requires experience that only can be achieved by practicing. Okay, um, and this go beyond the books. This go beyond the uh, practicing a computer. It, it needs that you touching and doing the things. Okay. Um, the traditional methodology used uh, in this case is apprenticeship, apprenticeship model which consists in, I go to a, a, a surgery activity, I see what the expert is doing, later the expert uh, let me to do a little thing, and later I need to do more, um, I don't know, more complex uh, processes, still you are an expert and you are comfortable with this scenario. This means a uh, um, learning scenario that is continually changing, okay, in order to adapt to the necessities of each, uh, it's a um, What uh, used to be used in this case, mannequins, calibers, or living animals. Uh, the advantage is the relative low cost. The problems: um, availability and material reuse. When you do, uh, when you, for example, are using something and you um, carry out a punch, uh, 
later this can be a game down, so it's not easy to, to reuse this. The lack of feedback, uh, not always you have the expert there. In um, medical surgery, uh, they give you the cadaver that you are practicing, but not always the, sur uh, the surgeon is, is there telling you, you are doing this bad, you are doing this well. Okay, so it's not easy. And not always the cadavers, uh, the, the, organ, the organs, have the same uh, feel than when a person is, is being operated. So. Uh, this uh, interesting. In some cases, also ethical problems, especially when you're using cadavers or, or living animals. In fact, in Spain, uh, I don't know, two months or two months ago, we have a very important problem with this because in one university we were using with bad proposes uh, cadavers. It's, it's difficult, okay? Um, and this is becoming solid because we are beginning to use virtual reality to do this, okay? Virtual reality. Uh, tricks the use of sensory channels to produce the illusion that you are really doing this and relies uh, the use of different devices and techniques. Uh, here you have two, okay. Uh, in this case, uh, they are, um, this is a, uh, uh, I don't know what to say it in English, it's a kind of operation in your knee, okay. Uh, this is a typical, uh, you have a typical image that you have when you are practicing in sports. It's a pro, it's probably one of the, of the the idea is that you are using this and you are seeing it. A key problem, maybe, is um, we, have, we have some advantages such as uh, the availability for training and repeat as much as we need and, and a procedure, the safety for error and prevention, but it can be useful always because maybe you need a lot of times the, the, the sense of touch that we are not having necessarily here. And uh, the sense of approach is achieved by using haptics. Haptics is a kind of interface in which, we, as we have commented before, uh, simulate the sense of approach and it's based on recreate um, uh, a first feedback to, to, to recreate this test. I always tell the people that uh, we, you, can, you can talk about this if you haven't told it. Okay, I'm telling to you, I'm trying to tell to you what you feel, but it's incredible because if you close your eyes and you're using this kind of thing, you feel exactly the same. Well, it, it, sometimes it's not so um, good if you are touching an organ. The still can be good, okay? But what I mean is um, you have that opportunity that in other cases is very difficult to achieve. Um, so we are using haptic simulators because uh, they improve uh, the, the learning curve in order to, to achieve this kind of uh, surgical skills. And uh, they, can, uh, uh, they have opportunities that in other cases uh, would be very difficult to, to find, such as the pulse rate, uh, measure the level of parents of a tissue or organ. Uh, you can broke an egg with a with one of these surgical instruments. Okay, it's your fault, but you are not blinding no one. So that's important also. Um, and uh, it is used uh, in several fields. For some of them, the physical properties of tissues and organs, but it also with several procedures such as the laparoscopy, endoscopy, bone surgery, palpation, heart etc. Um, but the problem here is, okay, you have these kind of tools to do this, that you need to motivate people. And how to motivate them? By proposing games, okay? So we are mixing games with this kind of interactive application, but this need for an evaluation stage, and a stage in which you can uh, measure what the student has done in order to, uh, I don't know, uh, know the performance and compare it with the other uh, people that is studying this. Um, the problems we have found currently, um, VR simulators um, don't have uh, an standard methodology to teach and learn. So we have to define different methods depending on the, on the virtual reality uh, tool that we are using. Uh, they, can become, they can be considered static because most of them are designed for a specific uh, surgery activity. They are not common, you can not load now one specific surgery activity and later another. Um, and feedback is not easy to provide to, to, the, to the student. Um, 
Also, we have problems because the APICs, uh, people are using the specific APICs of the APICs. This means that if you want to um, take your program and put it in another APIC, maybe it doesn't work. And finally, the active device uh, integration is not mature enough. The technology is mature, but the integration with other tools is not so, so advanced. Uh, Taking this into account, we have to push a uh, framework which is based on three uh, main uh, issues the expert, teaching, and learning. Uh, uh, this work. The expert, what is going to, propose, uh, pro to provide us? A knowledge base. A knowledge base with his or her experience, providing us a theoretical, uh, theoretical base, giving us which are the items to measure, to take into account. For instance, the angle in which that you are using to punch uh, one organ is important or cannot be important depending on the, on the activity. The, the, uh, the also, it can be the, the steps you have to do in order to carry out a, a, surgical, a, a surgical activity and also how to improve this kind of things. This, if as the expert, that defined a, a surgery center. Okay. This surgery scenario are based on a set of steps that should, should be carried out in a, in a specific order and each of these steps is represented by a um, state machine with different st states that give the student feedback about if they are carrying out the things properly or not. Okay. These are loaded in the simulator and the students play with it. Okay. The students play with it in and when they finish each step, they um, uh, will have some feedback for the for the expert that has been defined before. Okay, has been defined by the expert. And um, they can see there also that they have carried out a, a, a cataract and surgery properly, or if they have blinded the, the person. <coughs> Sometimes uh, this could be good for them. Okay, um, this uh, simulator is based on two, uh, two main components, H-Logic, uh, that comes with a commission and institution of uh, surgical training centers, it's written in C++ and provide evaluation capabilities, and h over which is a, a game engine that uh, loads these kind of scenarios and also provide the interaction with that. Okay. Um, Another main issue when we are taking into account this kind of framework is how to integrate it and how to provide, um, how to say, gain, gain capabilities or gain uh, features to our our learning technique. Uh, in this case, we need. Well, I think that that could be interesting is to integrate it with uh, institutional environments. Why? Because the teacher can launch a uh, game activity. The people can carry out the game activity in the in our simulator. Uh, here or she will achieve some kind of feedback and the outcomes can be considered into the learning management system of the institution and it can be used with uh, different proposals. For example, you can publish and uh, you have a classification with the best students in, in a specific uh, surgery scenario or you can provide them a budget that is very common now in, in gamification context. So this has been done by using uh, an integration between the simulator and the university LMS. In, in the university LMS, you have a course, you have to define a game activity, and by using web services, the web services that's an example, uh, for instance, all, all, I think all the, all the learning management systems are providing this now, uh, are uh, web services to uh, integrate different kind of tools. In this case, with these web services, we can launch an activity in the simulator that is based in HLogic and HOGRE and provide, by using HOGRE, outcomes to the platform about the, the uh, student performance and also feedback from the expert to the, to the simulator. Um, in our uh, university, we, have, we are trying to do this in a transparent, in a transparent way and to, uh, this implies to use a kind of uh, single sign-on system. So, the, the student and the teacher only going to log in and specific 
principle values. And that's more or less what we are doing. We are trying to um, give the students the possibility to really um, interact uh, in, with uh, surgical scenarios by using virtual reality and also haptics so they can uh, train the touch sensor and psychom um, psychomotor skills. And um, we are providing this, um, defining it as a game. So they can be most in, more, more interested in this kind of, of activity. So that's all.